Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our weekly mini. I'm Carolyn, your host. And this week, we are excited to have you back. We have another bite-sized workshop on the hottest acro topics. A few things before we get started, you can reference all of our previous weekly minis and more amazing content on our Acrobatic Arts channel on YouTube. I'll put a direct link in the comments for you. If you have any questions while we're live, drop them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer those for you as well at the end of the episode. If you know someone who would benefit from hearing about today's topic, it is a hot, topic for sure be a friend and click the share button on this post right now and let them know we're here today we are so fortunate to have vicky fletcher here to talk about the cartwheel mounter vicky has adjudicated dance competitions and has taught workshops at many studios worldwide she feels it's important to stay current with training so attends workshops and conventions whenever she can she's won many awards for her creative and innovative choreography and has uh, and her students have won numerous awards scholarships and titles Many have gone on to pursue their own careers in dance, whether it be performing in companies on uh, performing in companies or on cruise ships, studying dance in university and becoming teachers themselves. Vicky is our resident expert here at Acrobatic Arts and will bring you lots of great tips today. We've got Licky, uh, Vicky live in studio at Mickey's Dance Connection in Brantford, Ontario. Good morning, Vicky. I'm on mute. There we go. There you go. It's on mute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that. Right. Yes, welcome, welcome. Everything Thank okay you. here? Yep, everything's good. Awesome. How's everything you? How's everything with you? We're fantastic. We're thrilled to have you and Victoria here this morning. I know you've got lots of great tips for us, and that this comes high on demand. So I'm just going to pass things over to you. Take it away. Right. Um, okay, so teachers, um, we're going to talk today about the cartwheel mounter. Um, first, I just want to. Um, talk to you about why it's called a cartwheel mounter. Um, so this is done originally by gymnasts and it used to be um, a way for them to mount the beam. So it was kind of an entrance onto the beam. So they would put their springboard or that beat board right at the end of the beam and they would cartwheel or round off onto the springboard and then do that half twist front walk over on. Um, so that is the, um, the meaning behind cartwheel mounter. So um, the part the the second part of it um is similar to an anodi so that is also another skill that you will find um in the accessory material of the acrobatic arts um syllabus and they are very similar but i would find that the i find that the anodi is harder than the cartwheel mounter only because it's coming from a standing and it's coming from a completely squared off position um, and there's not as much momentum. So this is a good skill. The cartwheel mounter is a good skill leading up into the anodi. Um, a lot of the times with the anodi, it's also done in a more of a pike position. It can be done in a tuck. We're gonna do the cartwheel mounter in the tuck position. Victoria has done it in a pike position. Um, we've done it from an aerial entrance, um, just different things to change it up, but we're gonna do it right from the basics and I'm just going to take you through. So if I was to teach these to my beginners that are just going to start learning them, this, these are the steps that I would take them through to get them to um, the final skill. So I'm going to get Victoria to do a cartwheel mounter for us. And I'll move that out of the way. So we'll just get you to show it once. And that's a good one. And then we'll see. And then we'll go on from there. Okay, so it's basically a, a combination of a cartwheel rebound and like a tuck front walkover coming out of it. Okay, um, this skill actually is something that I think a lot of people think is actually a pretty easy skill, but it's not. It looks easier than it is. Um, it takes takes a lot of courage, right? When you first started learning this, yeah, it's it's one of those skills you kind of you you really got to go for. Um, but we're going to break it, break it down. The rotation of the skill is what's hard, hardest. So you've got that horizontal rotation going from facing one direction to facing the other. But the hardest rotation is going from head up and hips down to head down and hips up. So that rotation has to happen so quickly and right at the right time. And if it doesn't, it's going to be kind of detrimental to that skill. OK, um, so we are going to break those down. First of all, I would say before your dancers are doing this, they have to have really strong cartwheel rebounds. They need to be super strong in their shoulders, their upper body, their wrists. 
their core and a really strong back. Okay. So if they are not strong in their back and in their core, when they land in this, and it's quite a hard impact on your shoulders. If they are landing and they're not super strong, their lower lumbar area is going to take the brunt of this. And it's going to be really crushing in their spine if they cannot um, withstand that, that impact. Okay. So um, lots of upper body things, lots of handstands. It's the number one thing I say um, in acro to begin with is handstands, handstands, handstands. As much as you can get them on their hands, the better. Um, so we are going to start at the very beginning of the skill, and we're going to talk about the cartwheel rebound. So can you just go? I'm going to get Victoria to do a cartwheel rebound. So your cartwheel rebound comes in level five of the syllabus. Um, you should be teaching these on both sides. I would strongly suggest that you do um, the cartwheel mounter and stick to one side for a while. <laughs> um, learning to twist the opposite way can be really tricky for them. So try and stick to one way. All right. So in our cartwheel rebounds, we're going to look for a really quick entrance. You can do it a hurdle into it. Victoria's just going to do it from a tondu probably today. Yep. Just because I don't have a whole lot of space right here to keep you in frame. So she's going to start from a cartwheel. We want to make sure that she is going to land squarely facing back where she started. Okay. So watching that those feet are as, as um, side by side as possible. They should be like this. This is what I mean by side by side. Try not to be here. You will notice when Victoria does her cartwheel mounters that her feet come out of line. We're still working on that. Um, but you will never have their feet right together. Never in a round off or even in the cartwheel rebound. Cartwheel rebounds easier than round off. Um, but they can have a little bit of a space between them, okay? Um, so just make sure that they are as even as possible. So we want to make sure that that second foot that's coming into the ground. So Victoria is going to do a right cartwheel. So it will be her right foot that comes in. That one really has to drive into the ground to create that power that's going to be needed for, for the, um, the front walkover part, okay? So we're just going to do a, get her to do a cartwheel rebound first. We're going to watch that the rebound goes up and back and that she's in a hollow position when she does it. Go ahead. Okay, so if that rebound is going forward and she's she's jumping back towards where she started, that means she's not getting her heels into the ground and she's in a really bad position to connect anything. So she's if there if she was going to connect a back handspring to something like that, but her rebounds going forward, she's going to be up and underneath herself and going to be in a really dangerous spot. So we want to make sure that the rebounds are always going back and up at the same time. Um, you can do these in every class. So they would do cartwheels, regular cartwheels down the mat, their one arms, they're flying their pops, and then they go into cartwheel rebounds um, and round offs and do them both sides. Okay, so we're really looking for that nice um, tight body and in that hollow position when they're in their rebound. So that's the first thing that they need to know how to do and how to do it strong. The second one we're going to do now, I'm going to get her to do the exact same thing, but she's going to do it in a tuck position with her arms up over her head. So she's not going to turn. She's still just going to do cartwheel rebound, but in a tuck with her arms up. Go ahead. Okay. So just rebounding off that two feet again, arms up nice and tight by the ears. Really watch that the arms are up tight and they're not wide. Okay, so we want to make sure that they're squeezing. She should still be in like a hollow position and pulling those knees up to her chest as opposed to heels touching your bottom. Okay, so then once she's done that, we would do a couple rows of those. Now she's going to add the turn. So she's going to rebound and she's going to rebound in her tuck and she's going to do a half turn. So if she is a right Cartwheeler, she's going to be rotating right, so over her right shoulder. If she is a left one, she'd be rotating left over her left shoulder, okay? Ready? And over and up. Okay, and did you notice that she's landing with her arms up as opposed to in front? Because this is where the um, front walkover is going to come from. Their arms will be up, and they will tip then head down, feet up, okay? As opposed to being out here. Putting your arms out in front is also going to make her go forward, and we want her to go up and underneath herself for these. So once they get those, they would do those. Really watch that they have a really strong core and that everything's moving in one piece. So sometimes you'll see they'll land and they'll twist their upper body and then their lower half will come with them. Um, if they do that, 
they're going to be landing that front walk over really crooked and not like their shoulders aren't going to be square nothing's in a, they're going to be in a dangerous position so making sure that everything is working as one piece and it's rotating as one piece and that they land solid okay with their arms up over their head so super important that that is there can we pull this out so i'm going to pull out um the incline mat now i will tell you you do not need the incline mat so you you can teach these just fine victoria learned these when you're what nine yeah she was probably nine or so i guess when she learned them i didn't have this large incline mat and if you have like a little crash mat you can even put that on top just to kind of um give them a little bit more of a cushion the crash mat is also good for them when they start learning it the first time because it gives them a little bit um more of a safety blanket on their landing but like i said it is not something that you 100 percent need like i said when victoria learned these and stuff she, we didn't i didn't have crash mats i had an incline mat but that was it okay so um we are going to take what we just did so that cartwheel rebound with the half turn and we're going to now learn to go from head up to head down this is the hardest part of the skill so when when they rebound they have to be up but as they're going up that the hips need to go up so it is one thing that um, takes a little bit for them to understand and it's it's just a lot of times it's a fear factor and the fact that they're not going for it 100 percent like this is not a skill that you can give 50 percent if you do 50 percent they're going to come down on their head and that's not good so they really need to know that they the more energy they put into it and the more power they put into it then the the ending of it is going to be a lot easier okay so what I'm going to get Victoria to do, they need to learn to mark this out. So she's going to stand about where she needs to be, where she wants to actually turn. So turn like what? So they would understand face that way. So this is where she would be. She would be landing like this and she's going to actually go do the jump tuck forward roll. She's going to go up and into her forward roll that way. Okay. So we're basically going to do the cartwheel rebound in the top position into a forward roll and that's going to help them understand that their hips need to go up and their head needs to go down. So Victoria is going to stand where she starts it she's going to do this whole thing just from a tondu so she's going to start in her tondu. She's going to do her cartwheel land with her feet together where she would that's where she would spring from so she knows this is where she's going to start now she's going to tondu her foot now she should be able to do this cartwheel into the rebound half turn forward roll down and not hit the incline mat hopefully that makes sense to everybody so she's going to tondu so she just kind of marked out her spacing so she's going to do her cartwheel her half turn rebound in her tuck and then forward roll out of it go ahead okay so we would do this over and over again put him in stations do cartwheel rebounds in one station cartwheel rebounds with the tuck in the half turn and then do cartwheel rebounds with the tuck and the roll down okay. Um, this is uh, a good way for them to understand that whole twist in the air that has to happen and the hips need to go up without that impact of landing on their arms yet or on their shoulders okay Can you just do that one more time. Okay, so now she tondus and go over and then up okay so if you notice her feet are a little out of line there that's going to be normal the more you try to get them to get them as close together as possible the better okay so now you can just shut that off all right so that is the cartwheel at the beginning of it so that cartwheel rebound is really important that second foot needs to come in to give that lots of power and a nice tight body on that rotation okay so now the second part of the skill is basically like a tuck front walkover. So can you just show them a tuck front walkover from standing? Okay, so she does a tuck up and then she splits and front walkovers out. So that's the ending of the skill. So once they have a good tuck up front walkover, they have to know that um, with this skill, the really important part too is that they're keeping the skill short. So that front walkover is not gonna be long. It's going to be shorter to help get their hip over top of their ankle when they land or they're never going to be able to do that recovery okay so now victoria's going to do a jump into it so instead of just placing her hands on the ground doing a tuck up she's going to jump into it and she's going to do a couple that you kind of just 
like work up a little bit. So do one that way and then come back. So they'll start small first and they'll just go jump up and over. Okay. And then they can do one that's a little bit bigger and they go jump up and over. Okay. Now, can you do like a big one? Think more height too. Yeah. Height and distance. Up. Okay. So do you see now how you've worked your way up? So they do the tuck front walk over and then they just slowly start jumping off. Watch and make sure that they are hitting that tuck position and going straight up before going over. If that makes sense, we don't want them to, a, a lot of times I find they wanna come off of one foot. So then everything gets twisty. So everything's gotta work as one piece. Now they're gonna do the same thing, but her arms are gonna go come from up, okay? So instead of throwing her arms forward, she's gonna go this way. So now this isn't gonna go out because she has no arm momentum that's gonna shoot her forward. She's gonna go from head up to hips up as fast as possible. So she goes up, up and underneath herself almost. Ready and go up. Good, and turn around, come back the other way doing it. Okay, so watch if you can how fast the hands go down and as the hands go down, the, the body moves as one, and those hips instantly get stacked over top. Ready? And go. Okay? So that is the second part of the skill. So to build some strength in that, you need a lot of strength, like I said, in the upper body, in the shoulders. One thing that's good is donkey kicks. Can you just show us regular donkey kicks? So regular donkey kicks, these are great. Not only do they work on your blocking skills and stuff, but they're great for this because it's helping get the hips up, but it's also that impact onto the hands, right? So um, a lot of the times the dancers aren't used to that impact. So just do some regular donkey kicks. Okay, so those would be your regular donkey kicks. Now she's going to change them up a little bit and do kind of like an anodi donkey kick. So she's gonna go underneath herself and hips up, underneath herself and hips up. Ready? Up. Good, now can you do them all in a tuck? Now she's gonna do them all in a tuck and same thing. Go up and tuck, up and tuck, up and tuck, okay? So all of those are great things that you can do. So you can spend a day working all on your cartwheel, mounter, or the cartwheel part, the beginning part um, in drills. And the next time you can come in and you can work on the second part, which is that front walkover, okay? So work on all of these different kind of drills. And then you're gonna start connecting the two. So when they first do it, I would get them to do a cartwheel with the half turn, finish with their arms up, and then go into that um, front walkover from there. Can you do that? So we just don't completely connect it. Up, land, over, okay? So all of this is doing is creating the two that are going together, the rotation, and then going into the next skill. But the hardest part is that it's the hips up, right? So um, just even, can you put the crash mat out? Using this, like a crash mat like this, not the, no, not the incline crash, yeah. <laughs> um, using, using the crash mat, is great so it just gives them that extra little bit of cushion when they first start to go for it can you do a bad one yeah i'm gonna see if she can do a bad one for us so and i don't mean a bad one i mean one that's like when they're first starting to learn they kind of look like this they're a little bit hesitant so just kind of do like a little one into it um just do the front walk over yeah okay so they might kind of just go like this and they're kind of like oh do i want to do it yeah okay so that might be what it looks like for the first little bit. And then I'm just going to keep telling them hips higher, hips higher, hips higher, make it shorter. Um, so if you notice when she did that, she went out really long. So when she actually does it, it needs to go up and underneath itself. So the second part of this skill doesn't travel very much. Okay. The biggest part is going to be either the hurdle or the step before it, but the whole cartwheel and the, the half turn in the front walkover out is pretty short, right? Okay, you can move it out of the way. So anyway, that, what I'm saying is that crash mat is great for them when they're first starting to learn it, okay? Um, so building up that proper strength. Can you come back this way doing it? Okay, so I'll just get her, just do a good one coming back. Okay, go ahead. 
Okay, so if you notice how fast it is, um, that is key. And it's key to just um, going for it. So getting over the fear, um, you can actually get them to stand. I wouldn't stack them high, like even like two mats. So maybe even like six inches off the ground. And they can even just do like a tuck front walkover off of that, if that makes sense. So then they're actually just jumping onto their hands and it's giving them a little bit of a height and going onto them. Even their flying front walkovers, dive front walkovers, all of those will help build their upper body strength that they need for these. Um, but it's that, it's that hip rotation. So from head up to hips up is the most important thing. These are not something that I've ever spotted. I have done them before with a spotting belt. Um, so those are handy. If you have one, you could use those, but it is not something that I have physically spotted because they're gonna either twist into me or twist away from me. And I think I, if I actually went in there, I think I would cause more harm to them <laughs> than good. If your dancers have good body awareness and they have strong upper upper body, strong cores, wrists, shoulders, um, and backs, and they have strong walkovers, they have all of those those building blocks. They should be able to get this um, pretty easy if they're determined and a little bit fearless. So um, that's kind of um, I guess my uh, little tutorial on cartwheel mounters. Um, yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Awesome. Thank you so much, Vicki. Victoria, what an incredible demonstrator. Thank you so much. So uh, progressions and lots of hard work. Yep. Yes, progressions, progressions. Um, yes, there are questions, Vicki. So okay. um, on that, you have the expert here. You have the time. Vicki's gone through so much here. And so if there's something you have a question about now would be a perfect time to ask. So um, Deanna asks, what exactly is the hand placement for the cartwheel section? Does the cartwheel sense? is going to be different. So this is a whole other topic on itself. So it's the same thing with round offs. So I never, I never make my dancers do a specific hand. So you can do, tell them that their hands are side by side. You can do the T hand. You can do a full rotation before. Victoria, can you kind of just do a cartwheel? Okay, if we watch Victoria, she's gonna show you. Can you just keep them square first? So there's regular square. Now, can you come back, do the same way? Do this, like, no, come back because I want you to just keep going on your right side. Now, a T hand would mean her left hand is gonna come in and make a form like a T. This helps the hips rotate at the top. Go ahead, do that one. So if you watch where her hands go, okay? And then another one is that she, they do a full rotation. So she's gonna go over and she's gonna turn her whole body into it. So there is no right or wrong way. And all my dancers do something different. So it's gonna be them figuring out what works for them. Which way do you do yours? Victoria likes to bend her arms too. If you watch, she's an arm bender. It's not wrong. It's just, it's, and if you watch gymnasts, a lot of gymnasts do that. And you are far from a gymnast, so I'm surprised you do that. But but it's true, though. So if you watch a lot of the gymnasts, they take a lot of bending in their arms when they do a round off. And it's the same sort of prep as the um, as the cartwheel rebound. So there is no definite position. It's just a matter of getting those hips to rotate. So whatever works best for your dancer. Okay, great. Thank you so much for that question, Deanne. So we have some questions about mats. Yep. Can you, uh, Michelle asks, our friend Michelle McBride asks, can you stack mats in replacement of the incline? Yes. Okay. Yeah, just, I'm going to, the only thing with that is I'd be worried about them sliding. So, right. So if they're going to be going onto them and also the incline's nice because of the incline, it's not, she's not landing on a flat surface on a height. She's gradually going down, which helps her kind of absorb that impact a little bit more. Um, yeah, you, I mean, you can be pretty tricky with things and put pile them up and make your, your, your regular mats go on an incline. But again, you have to be watching with the sliding and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. If, if, if I can suggest you invest in a piece of equipment, I would suggest you invest in an incline mat. Not just for this, for so many skills. Yeah. Okay, great tip. Thanks, Michelle, for that question. L Lauren asks, is that the big cheese mat? It is. That's the big cheese. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. It's, it, it, you don't need one that big. You can do that on a reg. You can do this on a regular 
Like I would say, I would say if you're going to invest in one, get at least the, like, I think it's like five feet wide by six feet long. I would at least do that size. You don't need to do the big cheese. The big cheese is like 14 feet long. You don't need that. Okay, great. So lots of tips, lots of technical tips and drills and skills, lots to put into practice. If you have any other questions, I'm sure we can answer them here on Acrobatic Arts um, on Facebook, or you can reach out to us. I know we're always happy to help. And if you know someone that this particular training would help with, please let them know. As always, we come back every week with weekly minis to give you as much value as possible. And this was incredible, Vicki. Thank you so much, Victoria, for being here. <laughs> Thank you for having us. You were, yeah, that was amazing. So the one thing um, I know Vicki would agree with me on and that um, we want to remind you is in order to do exciting tricks like this, you have to have a solid foundation. Um, and to get that, you can come to our module one uh, teacher training course. We offer those online and in person. And I will put that link in the comment section directly for you um, so that you can find that today. So once again, thank you so much, uh, Vicki um, and to Victoria. Thank you teachers for joining us for this weekly mini. Join us next week where we'll be back chatting with Tim Buckley and Megan Wig about studio training versus professional training. If you'd like more information about our syllabus or acrobatic arts teacher training certification, we have a number of courses online and in person that are available to you and may be coming to your area. This summer is heating up and it is a perfect time to level up and teachers spots are going fast. This is your time. Visit us at acrobaticarts.com. Join us again next week and we'll see you then. Bye.